Howdy, everybody. It's great for you to be here. I'm so thankful that you are here with me today. Uh, it's Alan Verena again, and we are busy with our series on the Evangelism Toolbox. Now, today I want to share something of some of the struggles that Christians have as to why they do not share the gospel. Why don't they evangelize? Why don't they tell other people about their faith? And I just want to give you one or two pointers that come from a chap by the name of Greg Steyer of Dare to Share Ministries. Now, immediately, I want to say to you, I think the very first one that people struggle with is the whole thing of fear. And sharing your faith can be a very scary matter. And folks just have a struggle within themselves and a fear. Oh, how are people going to um, receive me? What happens if they reject me? What if happens if they chase me away and they, they ostracize me and they, they're not even wanting to hear my story? Well, you'll be interested to know, it would appear to me that the Apostle Paul had a similar problem. <laughs> Can you believe it? In, one, in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20, he says, Pray also for me, that whatever I speak, words may be given me, so that I will, listen, fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it, secondly, he says again, fearlessly, as I should. So, if you have any fear about sharing the gospel, I suggest you pray and you ask your Christian pals to pray for you as well. Then the second one is that of ignorance. Oh, the thing is, you know, Alan, I don't know the whole gospel. I don't know my Bible. You know, I, I'm, I'm, there, there are other guys who can do that much better than I. No, 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 no. I think many Christians deep down, they want to share their faith, but they actually honestly do not know how. And that's the reason for this series. I have a burden on my heart that I want the average Christian to be able to share the gospel. This is what we are called to do. And I would love for you to be able to rise to, the, to that occasion. And you see here in the scriptures we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, For what I received... I pass on to you as of first importance, says Paul, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. There we have the Gospel in a nutshell. And this is what Paul wanted to help. He wanted the, the Christians in Corinth to be able to grasp hold of these essential truths of the Gospel to be able to share with others. And then I just want to give you one more, and that is the whole problem of apathy. And sadly, there are many who call themselves Christians, but they don't really care about the lost. So very often what happens is people are inward looking, only about me, my family, my church, but they have no concept of the difficulties that there are out in our world, our neighbors, our friends, our family, those who don't know Christ. And folks, this kind of apathy is really a major problem. Perhaps you think and you know that there is a hell, but are we really concerned that others may be on their way there? You see, uh, they know that um, there are many people who don't know Christ, but folks like this will be separated from God forever if they don't come to know our Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe, folks, you need to pray. If you've lost your first love for our Lord Jesus Christ, it is my prayer that you will link into the Holy Spirit and ask Him to revive that heart within yourself. Um, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, Jesus, when He saw the crowds, He had compassion upon them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So those are just three of the problems that I think uh, Christians have in this day and age. On the other hand, now I want to speak more positively, because our greatest example is our Lord Jesus Christ himself. And that passage I read 
to you from Matthew chapter 9. Um, there are a few things that we notice here about our Lord Jesus Christ. Firstly, Jesus saw their departure from God. He saw that the folks were outside of the fold. They were away from a shepherd. They were away from home. And no comfort, no guidance, no company. They were apart from where they ought to have been. Uh, and you see, you see, sheep don't do that well. They just do their own thing. They need to be guided and directed. And Christians need to understand that our world is far away from God. And we need God to help us, to direct us, and to show us the way that we ought to go. So the first thing is, Jesus noted their departure from God. Secondly, he noticed their depravity in sin. What do we mean by this? Jesus wasn't referring to some physical fainting. He had a much, much deeper meaning. He was moved with compassion because he saw that the people were burdened by sin. They were weighed down by sin. They were not making progress. They were not able to connect with God and communicate with God. And he saw this in people's lives. And folks, you know, this is what sin is all about. I often use the word sin as an acronym. S-I-N. And what is the middle letter of sin? I. In other words, independence. I can do my own thing. I'll do it my way, said Frank Sinatra in some song that he, that he was singing. And you see, folks are going to head to hell if they want to live independently of God and not know him for themselves. Jesus saw their destiny was heading to hell. The third thing I quickly want to say is this. Jesus saw their despair without a shepherd. They were without a shepherd. They didn't have someone who was watching over them, caring for them, healing them, leading to them to wholeness, providing for them, protecting them. Uh, they didn't have that. And Jesus himself is able to do this when we come to know him for ourselves. And then, folks, just lastly, one more point. Jesus sent his disciples to make a difference. If you and I say that we know the Lord Jesus Christ, that means that we are one of his disciples. And a disciple is one who follows in the footsteps of the Master, follows in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm absolutely convinced in my heart that Jesus wants us to visualize the harvest. He wants us to see the field is white and ready for harvest and that we need to be involved in bringing in that harvest to the glory of God. Secondly, he would like us to agonize. Pray ye therefore, says Jesus. He wants us to be involved. He wants us actively to be engaged in prayer, praying for those that we know. Maybe we have family friends, uh, folks at Varsity, at, uh, at uh, Technicon, at um, you know, your workplace, in your sport arena, etc., etc., who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, we need to be agonizing over these folks in leading them to Christ. And then, of course, lastly, evangelize. Evangelize. Witnessing is simply taking the initiative, sharing Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit and leaving the results up to God. My friends, may God bless you as you share this good news of our Lord Jesus Christ with others. In Jesus' name, thank you for listening.